Seek sacrilege, man beaten to death for attempting to steal holy sword. On December 18th, a man aged between 20 and 25 attempted to steal, steal a ceremonial sword during prayers inside the Golden Temple in Amritsar, India. The sword was kept next to the Guru Granth Sahib, Sikhs, Sikhism's holy, holiest book. According to witnesses, he attempted to strike the holy book with the sword, which is considered sacrilege. He was stopped by security and, and was being taken back to the office, but the devotees overtook control from the officers and beat the man to death. His body was left outside the gates of the temple. The identity of the murder victim remains unknown. Such attempts of sacrilege happen often at that temple and get swept on the rug without capturing the perpetrators, or this is what a lot of people say. Just three days prior to this incident, a man was handed over to the police for allegedly tossing a holy book into a, the pond which surrounds the temple. Punjab MP uh, Sukhbir uh, Badal said, since no culprit was ca caught in the last five years, they were emboldened, meaning the people, the mob that killed this man. What the hell? Yeah. If you scroll down, you can actually see video of the guy um, trying to take the sword. Really? You have video footage of the guy trying to take the sword? The, they were doing prayers, and it's broadcast like 24 hours a day. Or it's it's on CCTV whenever they do this. So this was Wait, being... I need to get the... There's no... Is there any violence or anything that YouTube could get us in um, trouble with? No, not not bad enough to get us in trouble. You just see okay, him jump okay. the jump the railing, get the sword, and then people pull him out. Okay, the I camera. need a full screen version of this then. Yeah. And this man, wild. this man that actually try the man that tries to do this eventually, um, off off camera. Apparently, he was beaten to death. So this is him before dying, and he died for doing what we are about to see. Yes. What just happened? So off camera, he grabbed a sword. People say Where? that he put the sword through the Guru Granth Sahib, which, for those who don't know, is, I believe, the holiest text in Sikhism. But it's more than just a text or a holy scripture. He's a guru it's himself. It's believed to be the living guru. So it's living like, guru. It's like he was trying to actually put a sword through their like leader. Um, so like so for people to understand, it's like Christianity say, this is like, oh, the gospels are inspired by God. And the the Muslims are like, no, the Quran is the direct verbatim word of God. Um and the the, the Sikhs are like Oh, no, and the Hindus are like the Vedas are came from the fabric of the goddamn universe. It predates the world and it's just like it was like is in just like hard coded, coded within the fabric of the universe, right? But the Sikhs say our book is a is a living thing. Like it's a it's a person, it's a it's a guru. Okay, it's like it's live. It's alive. Okay, so okay, so everyone has their own weird version of why their books are sacred. But so I didn't see what happened though. Wait, what happened? There's you nothing... just see him jump the barrier. You can kind of see him grab and fling the sword. See, do you Whoa. see that blade? That was a, yeah, that was a swing. Whoa! I yeah, saw yeah, 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 yeah. What was it? What was it being swinged at? Like I don't see the. Where's the book? Reports say that it was at the book, which it was supposed to be um, off camera. Look, is that the sword? Yeah. Okay. But the sword itself is a holy object. Yeah. This guy is so chill. Oh he's yeah, like... he's not stopping for anything. Like somebody just swung a sword and he's just like, I don't care. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> like like <laughs> almost no reaction. <laughs> right. <laughs> um but what's really interesting yeah. is that well, one at the latest reports, they say that this man still hasn't been identified. And two, so we don't even really know what motives are 
why he might have done something like this. And also, the man who was murdered for this sacrilege or blasphemy, um, he is getting booked for attempted murder. They are booking the murder victim for attempted murder for trying to swing the sword at the book. What? Wait, he's already yes. dead. Yes. And, okay, and the reason why they're calling this attempted murder, because legally it's, they actually recognize the book as a living person? That's what I was reading in reports. Wait, so the law actually takes the fact that this book, well, I mean, the, the claim that this book is a living person so seriously that they are charging a dead person with attempted murder? Okay, I don't know if the law recognizes the Guru Granth Sahib as a person, but there were reports from officials saying that we are going to file attempted murder charges against this guy who is since dead because the Guru Granth Sahib is believed to be a living person or treated as a living person. So I don't know if it was just, I don't, I don't know if it's the law recognizes this or just these, this precinct or whatever is doing this. Yeah. But, but I was some, reading some people, about that. Basically some people within the legal system uh, yeah, may, so maybe I was exaggerating when I said the law. Okay, I was, should say some people within the legal system are like, oh yeah, this was attempted murder. This this is a guru. <laughs> like, don't worry, don't worry, Mr. Book. <laughs> we gotta get to the bottom of this. We gotta <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. We have by the way, for people who don't know, we have blasphemous art against um you know Sikhism. You know, we have mm -hmm. like, given that the, this book is actually a living person, we assume that it mo also just like every other living thing, it must, well, living conscious thing, it must have its own kinks, right? So we managed to find this kink and we managed to let him enjoy the, his kinks. And we have, blas you know, seek related blasphemous art. Um, we should have I believe prepared that, that, art, for this. that art is titled uh, Seek Foot Fetish. Yes, Seek Foot Fetish. So go look that up. Um, and also for any Seek person that is butt hurt over their, you know, over any blasphemy against their living guru, make sure they receive our art. Okay, make sure they see that we have art. Um, you know what was really interesting when I was thinking about this news was that. I can only, and this is pure speculation, but I can only assume that the man who did this was mentally ill. Because why would you go into this space, do this with no exit plan, when everyone knows that they do not effing play with this kind of thing? They don't play. They take it so seriously. Like... I feel like you would have to understand and know that this is what's going to happen to you if you do this kind of thing, because everyone else seems to understand that. So I can only, I'm just led to the conclusion that he must have been out of his mind. Um, like a few months ago, we covered the story where um, a lower caste man was lynched to death for running off with the Sikh book or alleging, allegedly doing that. And then he was just strung up and hung on the edges of the farmer's protest because the Nihang Sikhs, who are like the warriors, they went after him and just lynched him. And you know what happened to that guy? They also filed a blasphemy case on the guy who was murdered Died? then. They filed, they filed a blasphemy case against a murder victim? Yes. Hmm. Amazing. This is so progressive. It's it's really interesting to me. Well, actually, this was this this was only this was one of two incidences of men being lynched over Sikh blasphemy this week. We're gonna cover the second one later in the the news episode. Um, and uh, the reactions to this and what the different calls to action about how people want to address this is really interesting. So basically there are calls to make a, a deeper blasphemy law in Punjab specifically um, because they allege that this just happens way too much and that it's not taken seriously by authorities and it's not stopped. And um, so that's what 
it, it kind of is, is a similar mo um, attitude like in Pakistan where they're like, well, authorities aren't doing this. So we will feel emboldened and legitimized and validated and taking it upon ourselves to handle the, these blasphemy and sacrilege situations as we see fit. Is there any attempt at like arresting the people who murder some the guy? Um, at this time, I'm not sure if anyone has been arrested for this man's death. Like, Most are they, the do they seem more I'm motivated to find was... like? Are they more motivated to like go after the dead people rather than the people who actually did the killing? Like, do they seem more motivated? Uh, that's what it appears to me. It's really, it's really hard to, you know, it, you know, like people throw away the word backward countries. Sometimes you feel too loosely. Um, you think like, oh, you just say it's backwards because you're like from a first world country. But when you see how often like the solution to things is just to, you just say, oh, we're just going to kill you. <laughs> like, like you're, you just like, you get like, is this like, where is this? Like. God damn, like, I don't feel, like, how do you even feel safe just walking around this place? Like, like, you just gotta, like, you just gotta murder a guy? Like, just, like, I, I just, I just feel, like, how, what year is this? You just, like, how, how do people even live like this? That you could just, like, oh, yeah, you're, you're gonna die now, I guess, because we're offended. Like, oh, it gets know, so like... much worse in the next story <laughs> about oh, that no. happened this week. Okay. Well, when we talk about the next story, it's not only what happened, but mainly the reactions to it from public officials that we're going to cover because it gets mm. intense. Um, Rudresh is bringing up that. Um, where was it? I do it? have a lot of comments highlights. Um, comments highlight. Yeah, Punjab and Uttar Pradesh elections are coming up, hence political parties don't do ish about this and Hindutva. Yeah, a lot of people have been pointing to the fact that um, there are elections coming up in Punjab. And, you know, I really need to do more research myself personally about the relationship, particularly in Punjab, of the Sikhs to the Hindu majority of the rest of the country. Because situations like this do seem to be treated very differently than they do in other parts of the country. Like, sometimes I feel like Sikhs maybe get special treatment, but other times they're treated worse. So that's something I need to learn more about. It's both. It's both. Yeah, definitely. That, that's what happens when you have a, you are a minority with a lot of power. You get treated as you get privileged and treated and discriminated at the same time. Um, <clears throat> so let me actually highlight a few comments really fast. Rudrush is saying everyone condemned the sacrilege first and then the lynching only after backlash. Yeah. Obviously, the priorities should be over pieces of goddamn paper than human lives. Like, yeah. pieces of paper. Oh, my God. That's important. Human lives? Me. Not so much. <laughs> Um, Katie is saying Punjab chief minister has recently said there's no evidence of sacrilege in at least one or two of the cases. Yes, we're going to talk about that at the next news or when we talk about the other incident that happened. Um, Rudrash is saying Navjot Sindhu openly called. Oh, wait, nope, we're going to talk about that in the next news. So that's a spoiler. Okay. Um, Katie is saying, I think it was the other case where he said that there was no sacrilege. I don't, yep, okay, again, next story. Oh, sorry. Um, and Rajesh is saying UK Labour MP called it Hindu terror without knowing any of the details. Never apologized for her bigotry. Well, that'd be interesting yeah, to look into because we actually just, don't know anything about like so far reportedly we don't know anything about who this guy was besides he was like in his early twenties and wearing a yellow like headscarf. Yeah, like okay, if it looks Indian, then it must be Hindu. This is <laughs> what so many foreigners think. <laughs> Oh god damn. Like, hey, it looks it looks Indian to me. <laughs> How could it not be Hindu? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> All right. I mean, I don't know if this if this is true, but I, I, I can I can see how it's possible. Yeah, I can tell. I can um see Katie is saying they believe the book to be the final eternal I can't talk, final eternal, eternal. guru and can mm. never be changed to any extent. Yeah, which makes well, it like almost, less of a person. I can almost promise people. you that over time it has changed because all religious texts have changed. 
you know, it's and like I don't know. I know Sikhs would won't say it, but to them, gurus are treated like gods. You know what I mean? Especially when they make it, especially when the guru is not a human anymore. It's a goddamn book, and it's eternal, and it's a living thing. I mean, just say it's a god. Like just, just say, just say it. Just say this is our god. Okay. It's kind of you know it's kind of exactly how uh, Jewish people treated their God and carried it around and you know um, it's kind of like animism totemism it's totemism yeah it's very similar oh yeah. um D is saying I saw so many people defend this killing what uh, how like they already have punishments for this in Punjab, like for the situation. Like let the police handle it, but they don't think the police are going to handle it, so they just kill the guy. It's wild. And Katie is saying mob lynching is way too common in South Asia. Unfortunately, yes. Okay. I have a I have to address this. I'm gonna read this and address it at the same time, okay? The unknown apostate is saying Sikhism takes a lot of roots from Islam. This could also explain what it why it is hostile towards criticism no the unknown apostate it is true that sikhism takes a lot of roots in, from islam but that's not what you need for you <laughs> to be sensitive about criticism the fact that it's a religion it's enough like you don't have to have to you don't have to go as far as like hey i see the reason why they're so hostile towards people you know towards blasphemy is because of their connection to uh, to islam show me religions that haven't been hostile to criticism are you serious right now it's a religion it's a religion okay religions are hostile towards criticism you don't need to like do like this connection like oh here's the connection to islam that's that explains everything the fact that it's a religion explains everything Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.